Dear friends of Divine Grace Parish, uh, this is Father Jim, your pastor, speaking. Uh, as I start my third year as pastor, I feel very blessed uh, to be a part of the community. I'm very grateful to the bishop for assigning me here as well. What I want to talk about for a few minutes here are liturgical norms. Now, in our 2,000-year history, uh, the church will implement norms so that we can continue to focus on the elements of our faith. So, for example, Back in the 1990s, when this church was built, the norms back then stated that the Blessed Sacrament, the tabernacle, if at all possible, should actually be reserved in a space apart from the sanctuary. So, St. Ferdinand's Church was following the norms correctly when the tabernacle used to be in the room, the little chapel that's behind uh, the sanctuary here. Since then, uh, the norms have now asked that the focus be on the Blessed Sacrament, the tabernacle, in the sanctuary. So with the approval of the bishop and the diocese, about after seven, eight months after I was here, we had a parishioner build this beautiful wooden stand, uh, and we were able to move the tabernacle into the sanctuary as the church was asking us. So as pastor, I'm not just changing things uh, willy-nilly. Actually, I'm trying to implement those norms so that we always have uh, a strong focus on what we're doing. As you may know, the diocese has a warehouse that when churches close, statues, statuary, vestments, altar furnishings are all kept there. And when a church, uh, an existing church, wants to maybe add some of those furnishings, we're able to go there as well. Uh, it's not a required norm, but it's uh, more of a, a norm to promote popular piety. And that is, if possible, that there would be a statue of St. Joseph and a statue of the Blessed Mother in the sanctuary. So I was pleased that we were able to acquire, uh, first of all, St. Joseph and, of course, uh, the Blessed Mother to add that into the sanctuary. The purpose isn't to clutter up the sanctuary. I know people might have different opinions uh, about what we're doing up here in the sanctuary. For me as pastor, it's being sure that we can uh, promote uh, the Holy Family uh, with, with Our Lady and with St. Jovis as well, since we belong to our own Holy Family here at Divine Grace Parish. As you may know, back in the 1930s, uh, Sister, now St. Faustina, uh, had some visions as well as some personal encounters with our Lord. And one of the things that Jesus instructed her to do and to make known to the world was his mercy. That's God's second name. His first name is love. God is love. God is mercy. And this image uh, was the image that she saw regularly. And back then, an artist actually was brought in for her to describe in great detail the image of divine mercy. Every pope from the 1930s up to Pope Francis uh, has supported the promotion of the divine mercy chaplet, but also the image as well. So I'm pleased now that all three of our churches have an image of divine mercy. It's, not, it's more than a decoration. It visualizes for us. You see those two beams coming from our Lord. One represents divine grace that's pouring forth. It represents our baptism. It represents the water by which we are cleansed. The red represents the blood that flowed from him, a blood that flows from him because he died for us out of love and mercy for us. Also represents the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes upon us uh, every time we invoke our Lord as well. So I'm grateful to the family that was able to donate this image as well. It's just another opportunity for us to promote devotion and popular piety. And so having addressed now some of the reasons why we moved the tabernacle and added the statues of Mary and Joseph, as well as the divine mercy image, that all brings me to this uh, part of what we're doing next right here. 
Again, the church norms uh, state that every sanctuary should have a crucifix, a prominent crucifix. Um, again, norms weren't quite that specific 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and St. Ferdinand's was blessed with beautiful artistic presentations of our Lord. So, for example, we have uh, the resurrected Lord uh, here in our sanctuary, beautiful piece of art. Uh, in the past, we also, as you know, we have in storage the suffering Christ. It's not a crucifix, it's a suffering Christ. And in the past, that would be switched out. So uh, during Lent, for example, would be the suffering Christ, and then that would switch out the resurrected Lord. Because of the frailty of the art, uh, they, that was stopped by putting up the resurrected and then the suffering Christ because of the fragility um, of the statuary. So with that said, I'm going to uh, state now that we're going to implement uh, the erection of a crucifix. So having consulted with, first of all, the parish liturgy committee that meets regularly, uh, as well as the clergy team, us four priests and the three deacons and our seminarian as well, we're going to, as I stated, we're going to place a crucifix that was from a closed church, and that'll be happening within the next couple of weeks. I had some explanation in the bulletin, the beginning of summer, and you would have seen the last couple of weeks. There's also been an explanation as well. Uh, the purpose, again, is to, as Catholics, when we come into church, what's the first thing that we do? We make the sign of the cross, and then we go to our pew, we genuflect, typically making the sign of the cross again as we uh, look at the image of our crucified Lord as well. Uh, and so the, I know some people may feel uh, that we're disrupting the patrimony of this parish. Uh, I would see this as once again bringing a greater focus to aspects of our Catholic faith as well. And at the end of this uh, presentation, I'll show you where in the narthex we're going to place this resurrected Lord. You know, as I mentioned, the, uh, that resurrected Lord is a part of the patrimony of St. Ferdinand Church and now Divine Grace Parish. And as you know, when Jesus ended his ministry, the resurrection had occurred and the ascension takes place. And it's at that moment, the church has given her instruction, now go baptize and teach all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. So again, as I noted, when we come into church, we see the crucified Lord, we make the sign of the cross, the, the language of the liturgy as we go through the Mass uh, is so much rooted in his suffering, his death. So as we leave Mass, what we're going to do now is have the resurrected Lord in the narthex here, that as we leave, we're seeing our mandate. We're seeing our mission in that resurrected Lord. So how appropriate that when the priest gives the final blessing, the deacon says, now go, go in peace and proclaim the gospel that we're leaving. And we'll see that sort of captured in our patrimony with the resurrected Lord. So I wanted to explain these changes. As I said, the, it's only rooted in my motivation to not just follow church norms, but to be able to promote uh, the spiritual and liturgical patrimony of our 2,000-year faith. And I appreciate your understanding. And again, there may be some uh, disagreement to these changes, but uh, I believe they're, they're good for us. It's good for our worship. It's good for our prayer life. It's good for our spirituality. Thank you and God bless.